The Jameson family disappearance is a haunting unsolved mystery that unfolded amidst the vast and desolate mountains of Oklahoma. In 2009, Bobby Jameson, his wife Sherilyn, and their six-year-old daughter Madison embarked on a fateful journey to the remote wilderness, leaving behind a perplexing enigma that continues to captivate both amateur sleuths and seasoned investigators. This bone-chilling tale of vanished lives is shrouded in eerie circumstances, puzzling clues, and even a potential link to the supernatural. Tragedy, Murder and the Occult, The Puzzling Case of the Jameson Family On October 8, 2009, Bobby Jameson, 44, his wife Sherilyn, 40, their six-year-old daughter Madison, and their loyal dog Maisie set out on a fateful trip to the Red Oak area within the Sons Boys mountain range. Their purpose was to explore the possibility of purchasing a 40-acre plot of land. They envisioned a new chapter in their lives, planning to live in a storage shed they already owned on the property. After meeting with an associate of the landowner, the family parked their pickup truck and embarked on a short walk of approximately 15 minutes. Carrying a GPS unit, they ventured to a serene spot on a hillside, seeking solace in the tranquil surroundings. Upon returning to their vehicle, the Jameson family drove a short distance before leaving their truck abandoned and locked in the middle of a dirt track. It was at this point that they seemingly vanished into thin air, leaving behind a bewildered community and a trail of unanswered questions. The Sons Boys Mountains, a part of the larger Washita mountain range, stood as the backdrop to this perplexing tale. An area characterized by its scenic beauty, Sons Boys translates to without forest or without wood in French. However, beyond its natural allure, these mountains would become the setting for a tragedy shrouded in mystery. In the weeks leading up to their disappearance, peculiar details emerged, painting a troubled picture of the Jameson family. Sherilyn's son from a previous relationship, Colton, had seen her just two weeks prior and claimed that she made no mention of their plans to move to the San Boys area. Both Bobby and Sherilyn carried their own burdens. A car accident in 2003 had left Bobby with chronic back pain, while Sherilyn battled with poorly controlled bipolar disorder, leading to bouts of severe depression. Their marriage faced challenges, and the family had become increasingly reclusive, keeping to themselves. Adding a layer of darkness to the narrative were the family's beliefs and encounters with the supernatural. Bobby and Sherilyn shared their concerns with a local pastor, convinced that their home had been infiltrated by malevolent spirits. They contemplated the need for an exorcism, fueled by the daughter Madison's interactions with an imaginary friend named Emily, whom Sherilyn believed to be a malevolent entity. Bobby even sought special bullets to eliminate the spirits residing on the roof, and he delved into the satanic Bible in an attempt to perform his own exorcism. Accounts from friends and family supported the Jamesons' claims of a haunted home. Some even shared their own unsettling experiences within the house, leaving them feeling haunted and downtrodden. Whether real or not, the presence of paranormal activity seemed to envelop their lives. Tragedy continued to haunt the family. In July 2009, Sherilyn's ex-husband gained custody of their son, Colton, followed by Sherilyn's hospitalization due to a failed suicide attempt in September. During the custody hearing, young Colton expressed concerns about his mother's well-being, describing her as very depressed and frequently exhibiting strange behavior. The disappearance of the Jameson family shook the tight-knit community to its core. The subsequent discovery of their bodies in November 2013 only deepened the mystery. Authorities, unable to definitively determine the cause of death, left the case shrouded in darkness and uncertainty. What transpired in those mountains? Were they victims of foul play, lost in the unforgiving wilderness, or consumed by the demons that seemed to haunt their lives? Today, the Jameson family's story stands as one of America's most perplexing and haunting mysteries. The Sons Boys Mountains, once a place of natural beauty, now serve as a chilling reminder of the unresolved questions that surround this tragic tale. The Elusive Search for the Jamesons In the wake of their sudden absence, friends and family initially brushed off any concerns regarding the Jameson family. It wasn't unusual for Bobby and Sherilyn to withdraw from the outside world, and the decision to pull their daughter Madison out of school seemed like another one of their idiosyncrasies. However, the situation took a dark turn on Saturday, October 17, 2009, when a group of hunters on dirt bikes stumbled upon the Jameson's abandoned truck in Latimer County, northwest of Red Oak. Alarmed by the discovery, they promptly notified the police. Initially, law enforcement assumed the vehicle had been stolen, as the report indicated it had only been on the roadside for a few hours. 
However, later that day, the hunters called back, revealing that the truck had in fact been abandoned for several days. Located approximately an hour's drive from the Jameson's home in New Fowler, the site where the truck was found yielded no sign of the family despite an extensive search of the surrounding area. Determined to uncover the truth, Latimer County Sheriff Israel Beecham launched a massive search operation. More than 400 volunteers, along with horses, mules, ATVs, 16 teams of cadaver dogs, and an unmanned drone, scoured the terrain in a desperate attempt to locate the missing family. Yet, despite their exhaustive efforts, no trace of the Jamesons could be found. During the search, the cadaver dog teams repeatedly detected a scent near a nearby water tower, prompting authorities to drain the structure in hopes of finding vital evidence. However, their efforts yielded no concrete leads relating to the whereabouts of the missing family. Upon inspecting the truck, investigators made perplexing discoveries. Bobby and Sherilyn's cell phones, $32,000 in cash, maps, a GPS device, Sherilyn's purse, and wallets were all found inside. Additionally, they came across the Jameson's dehydrated and malnourished dog, a heartbreaking reminder of their absence. The vehicle itself appeared to be in working order, fueled, and showed no signs of involvement in an accident. The discovery of $32,000 in cash tucked beneath the driver's seat raised eyebrows. It was puzzling, considering the family was reliant on disability benefits at the time. Was this money intended for the land purchase they had been considering, or did it hint at something more sinister? such as involvement in illicit activities like drug dealing. Further scrutiny of the truck revealed an 11-page letter filled with vitriol, penned by Sherilyn and addressed to Bobby. In the letter, she expressed deep dissatisfaction with their marriage, stating that Bobby showed little regard for the daughter and listing various grievances against him. Sherilyn explicitly mentioned her desire for a divorce and labeled Bobby a loner and hermit, highlighting the fractured state of their relationship. As the police delved into their initial investigations, they found no signs of a struggle either inside the vehicle or on the soft ground surrounding it. No bloodstains, no shattered glass, only scattered debris littering the vicinity, providing no clear indication of what had transpired. The search for the Jameson family, once filled with hope and determination, had now become a frustrating enigma. The absence of tangible evidence only deepened the mystery, leaving investigators to grapple with the lingering question, what happened to the Jamesons on that fateful day? The unveiling of tragic remains. November 16, 2013, marked a solemn day as the long-awaited breakthrough came to light. A mere 2.7 miles from the spot where the abandoned truck was discovered, a group of deer hunters stumbled upon a haunting site in the Smokestack Hollow area of Panola Mountain. Hidden in the depths of this remote terrain, they uncovered the skeletal remains of two adults and one child, forever altering the course of the investigation. The passage of time had taken its toll on the victims, rendering the remains severely decomposed. Among the grim findings were three skulls, accompanied by various bones, bone fragments, remnants of clothing, and the victim's shoes. The scene held a haunting silence, hinting at the magnitude of the loss that had befallen the Jameson family. It took eight painstaking months for forensic testing to confirm what many had feared. The remains belonged to Bobby, Sherilyn, and Madison Jameson. The grim discovery was a solemn confirmation of the unimaginable fate that had befallen the family. Curiously, questions arose as to why the initial searches, despite their thoroughness, had failed to uncover the remains so close to the truck's location. Assistant Special Agent of the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, in response to reporters' inquiries, suggested that the bodies may have been obscured by falling leaves, evading detection during the earlier search efforts. The extensive decomposition that had occurred over the course of four years posed a significant obstacle in unraveling the truth. Determining the cause of death became an insurmountable task, with the level of decay erasing crucial evidence. Although one of the skulls, belonging to Bobby, initially raised suspicions of a bullet wound, later investigations led the police to abandon this line of inquiry. The discovery of the remains brought a sense of closure, yet it also reignited the quest for answers. What had truly transpired in the depths of the Panola Mountain Wilderness? The mystery surrounding the Jameson family's disappearance and the subsequent finding of their remains continued to cast a dark shadow over the community, leaving room for speculation and stirring unresolved debates. As the investigation moved forward, a deeper understanding of the chilling events that unfolded would be sought, propelled by the determination to uncover the truth and provide solace to a grieving community. A Maze of Investigations 
In the aftermath of the Jameson family's disappearance, the local sheriff's department and dedicated FBI agents embarked on an exhaustive quest for answers. Months were spent chasing down leads, interrogating potential suspects, and sifting through a maze of information. Yet, despite their relentless efforts, the investigation seemed to hit one dead end after another, leaving the enigma of the Jameson case unresolved. Reflecting on the complex nature of the investigation, Sheriff Beecham acknowledged the abundance of leads at their disposal. However, the sheer multitude of these leads presented a daunting challenge, as they pointed in a multitude of different directions, creating a bewildering web of possibilities for investigators to navigate. In their search for clues, authorities discovered surveillance footage captured outside the Jameson family's home. The footage revealed a series of perplexing events, showing Bobby and Sherilyn moving back and forth between their house and their truck approximately 20 times. Their actions appeared to be driven by an almost trance-like state, with moments of aimless wandering and intermittent periods of standing motionless, their expressions vacant and detached. The bizarre behavior observed in the CCTV footage raised suspicions of potential drug involvement. However, given the family's history of severe depression and paranoia, one can also imagine that the atmosphere within the house carried a weight of its own, potentially contributing to their altered state. During the course of the investigation, the police delved into the phone records of a mobile phone discovered in the abandoned truck. Surprisingly, they uncovered evidence of an outgoing call to voicemail on November 12th. The perplexing aspect was that the phone had been locked inside the truck at the time, leaving investigators grappling with the inexplicable nature of this revelation. As the investigations unfolded, the pieces of the puzzle remained scattered, refusing to align into a coherent picture. The peculiar behavior captured on surveillance footage, the elusive nature of the phone call, and the myriad of unanswered questions continued to complicate the search for the truth. With each revelation, the path forward grew increasingly convoluted. Amidst the uncertainty and the frustrating lack of concrete leads, investigators persevered, driven by a deep sense of duty and a determination to bring closure to a community gripped by the Jameson family's disappearance. Examining the Jameson family autopsy. The distressing state of the discovered bodies presented an arduous challenge to the forensic experts. Severely decomposed and devoid of soft tissue, the remains bore the unmistakable signs of extensive animal predation, further complicating the task of determining a cause of death. The harsh realities of nature had left little trace for investigators to unravel. Within this grim tableau, the only glimmer of intrigue to emerge was the previously mentioned possibility of there being a bullet hole in Bobby's skull. However, with the advanced state of decomposition and the presence of animal activity, the true origin of the hole remained elusive, leaving open the unsettling possibility that it was a result of natural factors rather than human intervention. Exploring theories behind the disappearance. A multitude of theories, all with tiny fragments of evidence, have emerged in the void of unanswered questions left by the case. These theories represent the collective efforts of investigators, experts, and the public, each attempting to piece together the fragments and make sense of the Jameson family's disappearance. Each theory offers a unique perspective, shedding light on different aspects of the case and providing a glimpse into the mysterious circumstances surrounding the Jameson family's vanishing. However, it is crucial to acknowledge that these theories are built on fragments of evidence, often incomplete and sometimes contradictory. While they offer potential explanations, they also leave room for doubt, uncertainty, and the need for further investigation. Theory 1. Lost in the Woods, A Tragic Journey One prevailing theory suggests that the Jameson family may have become lost in the wilderness, succumbing to the harsh elements and ultimately perishing from hypothermia. The Sons Boys Mountains, known for their rugged terrain and dense forests, present challenging conditions for even experienced hikers and outdoor enthusiasts. The area where the Jamesons parked their truck and embarked on their fateful walk was surrounded by vast stretches of wilderness. The dense vegetation, combined with the rugged and unfamiliar landscape, could have disoriented them, leading them further away from their intended destination. If they became lost, the lack of proper navigation tools or adequate survival gear could have hindered the chances of finding their way back to safety. The Jamesons were known to be relatively inexperienced in outdoor activities, which could have compounded their difficulties in navigating the unfamiliar environment. Additionally, the Sons Boys Mountains are subject to rapidly changing weather conditions. Sudden temperature drops, heavy rainfall, and fog can quickly disorient even seasoned adventurers. If the Jamesons encountered adverse weather during their journey, 
it could have further compromised their ability to find their way back or seek shelter. However, the discovery of their bodies arranged in an unsettling manner contradicts the theory of a simple case of becoming lost. The specific positioning of the remains raises questions about whether it was a deliberate act and if there was an external force involved in their tragic end. Theory 2. Foul Play, The Sinister Encounter The peculiar placement of their abandoned truck raises suspicions of foul play. The vehicle was found locked and abandoned on a dirt track, suggesting that something unexpected may have halted their departure. The absence of clear signs of a struggle both inside the truck and in its surroundings leaves investigators puzzled, as it provides no immediate indication of the nature of the encounter. This raises questions about the presence of an unknown person or entity that may have intervened and contributed to the family's disappearance. Investigators meticulously examined the abandoned truck for any clues that could shed light on the mysterious circumstances. The absence of forced entry or signs of a struggle inside the vehicle deepens the mystery, as it suggests that the Jamesons willingly exited the truck. However, the question remains. What prompted them to abandon their vehicle in the middle of a dirt track? The truck's location, away from main roads and concealed from casual view, suggests an intentional act. The decision to abandon the truck in such an isolated spot raises suspicions of a deliberate effort to evade detection or to create a sense of mystery around their disappearance. Further analysis of the truck's interior revealed personal belongings left behind. Bobby and Sherilyn's cell phones, $32,000 in cash, maps, a GPS device, Sherilyn's purse, and wallets were all found inside. The presence of these items indicates that the family did not leave with the intention of being away for an extended period or with the necessary provisions for survival. The absence of clear signs of a struggle both inside the truck and in its immediate surroundings leaves investigators puzzled. No bloodstains, broken glass, or signs of a physical altercation were discovered. The lack of such evidence raises the possibility that the encounter, if there was one, may have occurred outside the truck or that the perpetrators took measures to eliminate any visible traces of a struggle. Theory 3. Murder-suicide, a family's desperation. Another disturbing theory that emerged is that of murder-suicide. The missing nature of Sherilyn's .22 caliber pistol and the potential bullet hole found in Bobby's skull initially pointed in this direction. The potential evidence of a gunshot wound on Bobby suggested the possibility that he may have taken the lives of his wife and daughter before turning the gun on himself. However, the absence of gunshot evidence on Sherilyn and Madison presents a perplexing contradiction. In a murder-suicide scenario, it is expected that both the perpetrator and the victims would bear gunshot wounds. The lack of such evidence raises doubts about the sequence of events and leaves open the possibility of alternative explanations for the injuries sustained by Bobby. Furthermore, the inexplicable disappearance and absence of Sherilyn's .22 caliber pistol adds another layer of complexity to the theory of murder-suicide. If Bobby had used the weapon to carry out the act, it raises the question of what became of the firearm afterward. Its absence hampers investigators' ability to establish a definitive link between the weapon and the tragic events that unfolded in the Sons Boys Mountains. The unanswered question surrounding the presence of a potential bullet hole in Bobby's skull, the absence of gunshot evidence on Sherilyn and Madison, and the disappearance of the firearm contribute to the uncertainty surrounding the theory of murder-suicide. It remains unclear why only Bobby would have a potential gunshot wound and what factors, if any, might have led him to such a desperate act. Theory 4. Cult Connections, Shadows of the Occult The possibility of the Jameson family's connection to a cult adds a haunting dimension to the investigation into the disappearance. Sherilyn's mother, Connie Cocoton, firmly believes that the family was targeted and killed by a religious cult operating in southeastern Oklahoma. There have been reports of cult activity in eastern Oklahoma, although a U.S. Marshal indicated that there had been no recent activity. Additionally, Suggestions of the Jamesons' involvement in witchcraft have surfaced. A witch Bible was reportedly found in their home, although Shenold claims that Sherilyn purchased it as a joke. However, their pastor, Gary Brandon, stated that Bobby confessed to reading a satanic Bible. Mysterious graffiti discovered on their property storage container also contained unsettling messages, including a reference to the killing of black cats. The cryptic message, three cats killed to date by people in this area, Witches don't like the black cat killed, fuel speculation about potential ties to witchcraft or occult practices. Sherilyn's mother also recounted instances of her daughter's erratic behavior, including driving her to Oklahoma City and abruptly telling her to get out of the car. 
These peculiar incidents raise further questions about Sherilyn's mental state and potential involvement with a cult. The most notable evidence of strange behavior comes from the security footage, where both Bobby and Sherilyn appear to be in a trance-like state. The family's claims of having two to four ghosts in their home, coupled with Bobby's inquiry about special bullets to shoot spirits, deepen the mystery surrounding their beliefs and experiences. While concrete evidence directly linking the Jameson family to a specific cult organization is lacking, the presence of peculiar writings and satanic literature hints at their association with the occult. Deciphering the true nature and extent of their involvement poses a significant challenge due to the cryptic nature of the writings and symbols. The investigation continues to explore the possibility of cult connections and their role in the enigmatic disappearance of the Jameson family. Theory 5. Drugs and Dark Confrontations, A Dangerous Landscape There were rumors suggesting that the Jameson parents were involved with drugs, and some theories propose that the family may have been entangled in a drug deal gone wrong. Sherilyn's mother acknowledged the family's financial difficulties, adding a potential motive for their involvement in such activities. The discovery of $32,000 in cash inside the vehicle raises questions about its connection to a possible drug deal, although the source of the money remains unclear. Had a deal gone wrong? Why would the other party leave the cash in the vehicle and not take it with them? Initial suspicions of drugs arose when police viewed the peculiar security footage, but former Sheriff Beecham stated that there was no concrete evidence supporting the theory that the Jamesons used or dealt drugs. However, he acknowledged that the possibility of drugs being involved in the disappearance could not be ruled out entirely. It is worth noting that taking their six-year-old daughter, Madison, along would be unusual if a drug-related event was planned to take place. While witness accounts and local rumors indicate drug activity in the area where the Jamesons disappeared, the absence of drug-related paraphernalia and evidence within their home complicates the validation of the hypothesis. Despite thorough searches, investigators have found no signs of drug use or trafficking. This lack of concrete evidence linking the family to drug-related activities leaves the theory of a drug-related confrontation in a state of uncertainty. The exact nature and extent of Bobby's involvement with drugs, if any, remain elusive. Theory 6. Family Feuds, Secrets and Strife Another compelling theory that has emerged from the investigation into the Jameson family's disappearance revolves around the troubled familial dynamics. Accusations and evidence indicate a strained relationship between Bobby Jameson and his father, Bob Dean Jameson, raising suspicions about his potential involvement in the family's fate. Less than six months before the Jamesons vanished, Bobby Jameson filed a petition for a protective order, revealing that the family had been threatened with violence by one of their closest relatives. Bobby claimed that his own father had threatened to kill him and his family on multiple occasions in late 2008 and April 2009. The petition shed light on the alarming nature of their relationship, describing Bob Dean Jameson as a very dangerous man involved with prostitutes, gangs, and meth. Additionally, lawsuits filed by Bobby Jameson against his parents add a layer of complexity to the family dynamics. At the time of his disappearance, Bobby was suing his parents, claiming he was owed property and vehicles. The lawsuit alleged that Bobby worked for free at his parents' gas station for years, under the understanding that he would receive compensation and partial ownership in the future. While solid alibis and a lack of substantial evidence dismiss Bob Dean Jameson as a primary suspect, the existence of strained relationships within the family remains a significant aspect of the case. The ongoing feuds, threats, and animosity described in the petition for a protective order highlight the potential role that these strained dynamics may have played in the tragic events that unfolded. Theory 7. White Supremacy and Hidden Agendas, Unsettling Connections Another potential theory that has emerged from the investigation focuses on the unsettling connections to a white supremacist acquaintance associated with the Jameson family. This individual's extremist beliefs and documented clashes with Sherilyn have raised concerns about the potential involvement in the family's disappearance. Supposedly, this acquaintance was a former boarder who rented a room with the Jamesons but had a tumultuous relationship with Sherilyn. During his stay, the man would mutter racial slurs and espouse white supremacist rhetoric. The situation escalated to the point where Sherilyn had to order him off the property at gunpoint. The investigation has confirmed that the acquaintance in question holds extremist ideologies associated with white supremacy. The documented beliefs, actions, and clashes with Sherilyn have become critical aspects of this theory. After the television show Disappeared aired a special on the Jameson family, Sherilyn's close friend, Nikki Shenald, 
received a mysterious phone call from an anonymous woman. The caller claimed to have been part of a white supremacist group that kept a book listing individuals who had caused them trouble. A hit list of sorts. She mentioned that she sometimes searched the internet for names she remembered, which led her to missing persons cases like that of Sherilyn and Bobby Jameson. The significance of this phone call remains unclear, leaving investigators with more questions than answers. Although police found a pill bottle with the name of the previous border on it among the multiple empty containers recovered from the truck, he has been cleared of any direct involvement in the murders, having provided a solid alibi. But the inclusion of Sherilyn's name on a supposed hit list further intensifies the need to scrutinize any hidden agendas that may have been at play. Theory 8. Kidnapping. A sinister plot. Another chilling possibility uncovered in the investigation into the Jameson family's disappearance involves compelling evidence supporting idea of a calculated family kidnapping. One piece of evidence that heightens concerns is the final photograph of Madison, which was captured in a disconcerting manner. The deliberate composition and eerie nature of the photo suggests that someone with control over the family may have orchestrated the disappearance with the specific intention of seizing Madison. The intentional nature of the photograph raises crucial questions regarding the identity and motives of the individual responsible for taking it. The calculated effort to instill fear or convey a message adds weight to the theory of a sinister plot orchestrated by someone with malevolent intentions. While the exact motive behind the abduction remains uncertain, investigators have explored several possible scenarios. One possibility is that the unknown perpetrators sought to extract a ransom for Madison's safe return. Another disturbing possibility is that personal vendettas against the family played a role in the abduction, driven by motives known only to the individuals involved. Theory 9. Paranormal Forces, Spirits and Shadows The perplexing case of the Jameson family's disappearance has drawn attention to the eerie and haunting angle of paranormal forces and their potential involvement. Witnesses and friends of the family have shared chilling accounts of encounters with the supernatural, adding an unsettling layer to the investigation. One of the most compelling aspects of this theory is the reported experiences of spiritual warfare and otherworldly encounters. Witnesses have spoken of unexplained noises, apparitions, and an overwhelming feeling of being watched or followed. These occurrences have left investigators questioning whether the family unknowingly entered a realm beyond the ordinary, where unseen forces may have played a role in their mysterious disappearance. The discovery of peculiar writings and satanic literature in the Jameson family's possession deepens the mystery. Cryptic texts with esoteric symbols and enigmatic messages hint at possible involvement in occult practices. The presence of satanic literature, notably the satanic bible, suggests at least a fascination with the darker aspects of spirituality. Alleged confessions and personal beliefs further add to the eerie landscape surrounding the Jameson family's disappearance. The family's pastor, Gary Brandon, claimed that Bobby Jameson once confessed to reading a satanic bible providing additional evidence of the family's potential involvement or interest in occult-related beliefs. Witnesses also reported the family's claims of having two to four spirits residing in their home, suggesting a heightened connection to the supernatural. While the paranormal theory adds a chilling dimension to the investigation, it is essential to approach it with a discerning eye. Concrete evidence directly linking the family's disappearance to supernatural forces has not been found, leaving this angle in the realm of speculation and mystery. Nonetheless, the presence of peculiar writings, satanic literature, and reports of spiritual warfare underscores the need for thorough exploration into potential supernatural connections. Whether this supposed haunting they were experiencing was a real thing or not, it could at the very least shed some light on the mental welfare of the family, and cannot be ruled out as playing a key role in whatever happened to them. Conclusion The disappearance of the Jameson family remains an unresolved enigma leaving investigators in the community grappling with unanswered questions and a search for truth. The investigation has been marked by perplexing discoveries and contradictions. The positioning of the bodies, the abandoned truck, the presence of firearms, peculiar writings, and eerie photographs have raised suspicions, but none of the theories can provide a comprehensive explanation for the events that transpired. Solid alibis, lack of substantial evidence, and inconsistencies in the narratives have dismissed many individuals as primary suspects, further complicating the search for answers. While glimpses of potential motives and connections have surfaced, they often lack concrete evidence to support them. Strained family relationships, extremist beliefs, hidden agendas, and the presence of paranormal elements have added layers of complexity to the case. 
However, without conclusive evidence, it is challenging to establish a definitive narrative that fully explains the Jameson family's disappearance. As investigators continue to explore leads, gather evidence, and analyze the available information, the search for truth remains ongoing. The hope for closure and justice for the Jameson family and their loved ones persists. The community remains vigilant, eager to uncover the full story behind this baffling and tragic incident. Until then, the case of the Jameson family disappearance serves as a reminder of the complex nature of investigations and the enduring impact of unresolved mysteries on those left behind. You have been watching The Mystery Abyss.